from exploding toads to cannibalistic lemurs, here are 10 examples of strange animal phenomena. Number 10. Narsus snake dens. Every year, tens of thousands of harmless red-sided garter snakes, Themnopus sotalus parietalis, arrive at the Narsus snake dens, a wildlife management area in the Canadian province of Manitoba. The snakes spend the winter hibernating in the area's natural limestone crevasses and tunnels, and at the end of the season, the snakes mate in huge orgies on the grass. It's the world's largest known concentration of the species, but it wasn't always this way. Back in 1999, after the population reached an unprecedented number of around 70,000, a bad winter killed tens of thousands of the snakes, bringing their numbers perilously low. The following year, the Narsus Snake Den's wildlife management area was established. Recognizing that many snakes died by oncoming vehicles because their migratory path crosses a major highway, workers created snake crossing tunnels and built fences to help usher them into the passageways. Since then, the population has recovered and no more than a thousand snakes die in traffic every year. 9. Eyeless Fish Stranding in early 2011, thousands of dead snapperfish, many who bore strange wounds and were missing their eyes, washed ashore on New Zealand's Coromandel Peninsula overnight. Fisheries officials acknowledged that the situation may have been deliberate and warned citizens not to eat the dead fish, although I'm not sure why anyone would need this warning, until they figured out where they came from and why. But no official explanation was ever determined, and starvation, poisoning, and natural causes were all ruled unlikely. When the same thing happened again around two years later, authorities still hadn't come up with an explanation for why it was happening. This time, however, they eventually ruled that an illegal fishing boat hauling in a broken net was likely responsible for the deposit of dead fish. Despite that, there was no word on whether the more recent incident was connected to the previous one. A massive cleanup of the rotting, stinking mess ensued as locals remembered the last time something like this had happened and grappled with the lingering lack of answers. 8. Raining Birds As Arkansas residents prepared to ring in the new year at the end of 2010, thousands of dead birds mysteriously rained down from the sky. About a half hour before midnight, an estimated 5,000 red-winged blackbirds European starlings, common grackles, and brown-headed cowbirds perished over the city of Beebe. During that same week, large numbers of birds also died in Louisiana, Sweden, and elsewhere. Not surprisingly, preliminary testing on the dead birds in Arkansas ruled the cause of death as blunt force trauma. In other words, they fatally crashed into various objects as they plunged towards the ground. As alarming and apocalyptic as these events seemed, scientists blamed media hype for any hysteria that came of it and pointed out that it is relatively normal for birds to die en masse. Speaking with National Geographic, Audubon Society ornithologist Greg Butcher said that nearly half of the 10 to 20 billion birds in North America die every year from natural causes. In the case of them dying in large numbers, he explained that crashes and loud noises are two main culprits. Karen Rowe, an ornithologist with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, told Nat Geo that fireworks were set off just before the birds over BB plummeted to their deaths, pointing out that the affected species have poor night vision and typically do not fly in the dark. She explained that they may have already been disoriented and that the loud fireworks may have caused them to fly lower than normal. Thankfully, according to Rowe, 5,000 is a fairly small amount, considering that there are existing roosts numbering in the millions. What do you think of this? Do you believe fireworks are the number one suspect in the bird deaths? Or is it something else? Let me know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons. 7. Mike the Headless Chicken Surely you've heard the saying, I'm running around like a chicken with its head cut off, but have you ever wondered if it's really possible for a chicken to do that? Lloyd Olson was a farmer who lived in Fruta, Colorado during the 1940s. One day in 1945, his wife sent him outside to retrieve a chicken to prepare for dinner. Olsen took his axe to the neck of a five-and-a-half-month-old Wyandotte chicken named Mike, but he missed the mark in the strangest way imaginable. Left with his jugular vein, one ear, most of his brainstem intact, and a blood clot that prevented him from bleeding to death, Mike was still able to walk clumsily and perch himself on branches. He attempted to engage in customary chicken behaviors, like preening, pecking for food, and crowing, 
Olsen decided to spare Mike's life, regardless of whatever horrible discomfort the bird was probably in, feeding the bird a milk and water mixture with an eyedropper and giving him small worms and grains of corn. Mike began touring the country with a sideshow and gained nationwide fame, appearing in dozens of newspapers and magazines. For 25 cents, members of the public could catch a glimpse of him firsthand as the sideshow traveled through their area. The headless chicken's owner became incredibly rich, raking in the equivalent of $52,156 per month in today's money at the height of Mike's popularity. In 1947, less than two years after surviving a beheading and rising to fame, Mike choked on a corn kernel at a motel in Phoenix, Arizona. The Olsons had left his feeding and cleaning equipment at the sideshow and were unable to dislodge the corn kernel from his throat on time to save him. Because the brainstem controls functions like breathing, heart rate, and reflexes in chickens, Mike stayed rather healthy up until his death. But it's hard not to wonder if he truly had any quality of life without his head, and that perhaps it was for the best that he did not go on living. 6. Exploding Toads German scientists and health officials were not only perplexed, but extremely concerned when some 1,000 toads puffed up to four times their normal size and exploded in Hamburg's Altona district in 2011. Dubbing the site the Pond of Death, the media jumped at the opportunity to spread hype, warning people to keep their children and dogs away at all costs. Of course, people theorized about what caused the amphibians to burst, with some wondering if the toads had committed suicide, while others entertained the possibility that they had contracted a virus that South American racehorses were spreading through the region. Amphibian expert Frank Muchman solved the case after examining both living and dead specimens and found identical circular incisions on their backs. Their injuries were the handiwork of crows who had evidently plunged their beaks into the animals with an insatiable craving for their livers. Muchman pointed out that the crows are intelligent enough to understand that the toad's skin is toxic, prompting them to go after the only part they perceive as edible. He explained that the toads only know they've been attacked after their livers were removed, at which point they inflate as a defense mechanism against their predator. Unfortunately, with no liver to contain the rest of their insides, the amphibian's lungs expand disproportionately, causing them to explode and spill their remaining organs. Because the toads exploded during mating season, Muchman surmised that the clever crows had taken advantage of their distraction, adding that the pecking would have been noticeable, but not particularly painful. It wasn't the first time toads had died en masse in Germany and elsewhere, including Belgium, Denmark and the US. And while seeing so many dead creatures is undeniably alarming, Muchman summarized the event into a few simple words, stating, it's just a part of nature. 5. Cocoon Trees In July 2010, Pakistan experienced an unprecedented monsoon season that brought 10 years worth of rain in less than a week, causing massive flooding throughout the country. Even worse, the water was slow to drain and became stagnant in many areas, resulting in a so-called slow-motion disaster. In the words of Russell Watkins, a multimedia editor with the UK's Department for International Development who spoke with National Geographic. With nowhere else to go, millions of spiders and insects fled to the safety of trees, where the spiders spun thick webs, resulting in a cocooned effect. Images of the phenomenon went viral online. While people were divided on whether the cocoon trees were scary, fascinating, or perhaps both, it wasn't entirely a bad thing. Mosquito populations proved significantly lower than normal in these areas, reducing the spread of malaria and other diseases. This phenomenon has even occurred elsewhere, including in the Australian city of Wagga Wagga, where cocoon trees and even entire fields appeared after a flood in 2012. In what National Geographic described as an arachnophobe's worst nightmare, Record rainfall prompted swarms of spiders from the ground-dwelling Linophidae family to flee for higher ground. Entomologist Robert Matthews told Nat Geo that the sprawling webs these creepy crawlers created, which he described as a vast trampoline, were more likely a dispersal mechanism that enabled the spiders to escape flooded areas. So much the dismay of anyone who is terrified of spiders, these examples show just how resilient they can be. 4. Christmas Island Crab Migration the Christmas Island red crab is one of 14 crab species found throughout the Australian External Territory, which is located in the Indian Ocean roughly 240 miles or 380 kilometers south of Java, Indonesia. 
At any given time, there are an estimated 40 to 50 million of these creatures living on the island. The population migrates annually following the first rainfall of the wet season, which can occur at any time between October and January. During that time, millions of the crabs travel toward the ocean to mate, with males leading the way and females following suit shortly thereafter. Their precise movement is determined by the lunar cycle. They time their migration speed and spawning just before dawn during a receding tide of the last quarter of the moon, according to Parks Australia. Somehow, the creatures know exactly when this very specific window of opportunity occurs and when it's time to scurry out of their burrows. After meeting at the beach to mate, male crabs head back home while females burrow them ashore. Each female produces up to 100,000 eggs in a single season, which she then releases into the sea. These eggs hatch the moment they touch the water, then the larvae ride out to the sea with a receding tide. Most end up being devoured by manta rays, whale sharks and other predators. Once the survivors have formed into baby crabs, they head back inland. It's rare for a large number of the larvae to survive but it happens once or twice every 10 years, and this helps sustain the population's numbers. The annual migration attracts throngs of tourists to Christmas Island every year who gather to watch as a seemingly endless stream of the animals instinctively move to where they need to be. 3. Beached Herring On New Year's Eve 2011, tens of thousands of dead herring mysteriously washed ashore on Norway's northern coast. Nobody knew why, but initial theories included the possibility that a predator, a strong tide or a storm, had driven the school ashore, or that the fish had possibly encountered a fatal, oxygen-deprived environment. The people of Kvainness, which sits above the Arctic Circle, began pondering exactly how to clean the 22 tons, or 20 metric tons, of dead fish. Then, just as soon as they appeared, they vanished, seemingly into thin air, Experts concluded that a combination of factors caused the mass stranding and disappearance, but they were not sure exactly what those causes were and said more testing was necessary to get to the bottom of the matter. Scientists were fairly certain, however, that the reason for the disappearance of the dead fish was fairly simple, that they had simply been washed back out into the North Sea. This was supposedly not the first time something like this happened. According to Jan Petter Jorgensen, who discovered the dead fish while walking his dog. A similar event had occurred during the 1980s, but a definitive explanation is yet to be found. Number 2. Cannibalistic Lemur The grey mouse lemur, Microcebus murinus, is an adorable primate that it's hard to believe we are distantly related to. By all appearances, lemurs and humans seem to have nothing in common with one another whatsoever. But we do share at least one trait with the creatures, as a team of researchers discovered in 2012 in western Madagascar. While searching for a tagged female grey mouse lemur, they found her dead, with a male specimen feeding on her remains. This particular species was never previously observed engaging in cannibalism, and although it had been seen in other primates, including chimpanzees, orangutans, and several types of monkeys, they had only ever been witnessed eating infants and juveniles, the discovery gave scientists their first inkling that non-human primate cannibalism is not limited to young specimens. It's unknown whether the male grey mouse lemur had murdered the female or if he stumbled upon her remains and just took advantage of the available meal. Either way, it's quite curious and just a little gross. Number 1. 17-Year Cicadas When soil temperatures throughout parts of the US hit 64 degrees Fahrenheit, or 17.8 Celsius, starting in May of this year, 2021, billions of cicadas began emerging from the ground for the first time in 17 years. Dubbed Brood X, the seldom seen population announces its presence quite loudly, with swarms reaching up to 100 decibels. 17-year cicadas live throughout much of the eastern and part of the middle United States, making their very occasional appearances as far south as Georgia and as far north as Michigan. They burrow out of the ground through dime-sized holes en masse, with as many as 1.5 million cicadas emerging per acre, 0.4 hectares, in some places. Power comes in numbers for the 17-year cicadas, who appear in throngs as a defense mechanism known as predator satiation. Of the 3,000 to 4,000 known cicada species, Brood X is unique to North America, along with another periodic species known as the 13-year cicada. The loud buzzing noise the males make, which is often as loud as a lawnmower or motorcycle, is the species mating call. Females lay eggs inside slender tree branches, and once their work is done, the cicadas all die. 
When the eggs hatch, the larvae drop to the ground, burrow into the soil, and spend the next 17 years waiting to experience just a few weeks of daylight before their own lives end. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about strange animal phenomena, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.